just want to send a happy birthday out to all the girls who are having birthdays in the next few days or just had them um, and then to Miss Gabby as well let her know happy birthday and we love her today we're gonna get started on the lesson that you guys submitted and I had a couple girls send me topics they wanted to discuss and they were all really the same topic um, it was around love kindness and friendship so I've kind of done a series around all three because it all goes together today we're going to talk about love kindness and, and becoming friends and, and where it starts and that's with our family and then we'll move on from there to friends and, uh, and enemies and things um, you know, it, it does. It starts with the family. You as teenage girls, you have your main job is to, of course, grow in Christ, grow and mature as a person, and and to be loving your family. And and if you can't love your family, you don't love your family. You can't love anyone else. Uh, it's just impossible. If you can't love the people who gave you life and who are your siblings, it's gonna be really hard to love somebody who is is outside your family. So we're gonna dig into some verses. Um, about that you know God commands us to love it's not a, if you want to if they if you feel like it if the person deserves it it is a commandment God tells us to love so not loving someone it is a sin all right so let's jump into John 15 12 says My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. <clears throat> so not only is he, God command us to love, he gives us a clear definition of what love is, as he loved us. And we've talked about the last few weeks, he loved us so much he sent his son to die for us. He, he died a horrible death. He's commanding us, love others that much. Not an ask, this is my command. Um, Galatians 5. 14 says oh, Sorry y'all got went to the wrong book There we go Galatians 5 14 for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. If um, if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So God tells us first of all, love, love others like I loved you. Um, which we know the love that he had. And then I think he kind of gives a backup statement, you know, love each other, love others like you love yourself. You know, we, we should love like Christ loves. But we're not perfect like him. That should be our strive. That should be our goal is to continually be growing in Christ and love like him. But if you can't, if you're not at that point yet, you can at least love others like you love yourself. Um, you know, that's pretty easy. We all want the best for ourselves and we want to be loved. So you should love others the same way that you want to be loved. <coughs> First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians six fourteen says, "Do everything in love. Everything, everything you do in love. That means helping do the dishes. That means talking to your friends, your parents, your enemies. Every single thing you do, do in love." And then Ephesians four two. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. So think about your family, your siblings. Are you patient? Are you humble? Are you willing to admit when you're wrong? Are you humble enough to let it go? If they treat you wrong, are you humble enough to just let it slide and, and be the better person? Patient, gentle, be sweet. Be nice, be caring, have a little courtesy, put yourself in their shoes. And bearing with one another, we're all going to make mistakes. We are going to. 
And so wouldn't it be so great if the next time you made a mistake, your sibling or your parents or your friends overlooked it just a little bit and understood maybe that wasn't your intent or maybe you're just having a bad day. We should overlook things for people. And then bearing with each other in love, love. So we are to love like Christ. We are to love others like we love ourselves. We are to do everything in love, everything we do in love. We are to be humble and gentle. And then Romans, Romans 12, t uh, 9 and 10 says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor another above yourself. So you're to love them like you love yourself, but you're to honor them more. So put them above you. Love others above your wants. You know, if it's something small that you may want to do, but someone else really could need something else, do it. If you are tired, but your sibling really wants to play with you, just play with them. Um, putting others' needs above your own. It doesn't mean to be a doormat. It doesn't mean to be walked all over or to be taken advantage of. It may mean that, but it means thinking of others first. Not thinking of yourself and your wants and your needs first, but others. Um, so let's, let's think about that. We talk about our family. Uh, first, we're going to talk about siblings. You know, and like I said, you'll never be able to love if you can't love your family. It should be God and your family um, at your age. And then eventually it will be your husband and your children. But right now, your family. Yes, your friends are great. Yes, you should love them. But if you can't love your family the way God wants, you can't love your friends the way God wants. So, siblings, you should be their biggest cheerleader and their biggest supporter. You should not be their biggest bully. If you are, shame on you. Change it today. You are their sibling. They need you. Especially if you're older than them, they need you. It is your responsibility to love them, guide them, support them, and cheer them on. If you're younger, <laughs> remember, you're not there yet. Show a little patience, show a little kindness, support them too. Understand that you don't quite understand what they're going through, but you can still have a relationship with each other. You know, God did not make your sibling just like you. I'll tell you that again. God did not make your sibling just like you, but God did make them your sibling. He put you together for a reason. Get to know each other. They don't have to like the same things that you like to be friends. They don't have to do things the exact same way that you would do it. Get to know them. Understand them. Build that bond now. Because if you build it now, those relationships will be so beneficial. They will mean the world to you down the road. I promise you, you will need your siblings later on in life. Build it now. What better time than when you're stuck at home anyways? Spend time together. Get off your dang phones and have fun with your siblings. All right, now we're going to move on to parents. Uh, let's see what the Bible says about our parents and loving them. Exodus 2, or sorry, Exodus 20, 12. Honor your mother and your father so that you may live long in the land the Lord God is giving you. Honor your father and mother. Proverbs 1, 8. Listen, my son, to your father's instructions, and do not forsake your mother's teachings. Colossians 3.20 says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. I'm going to read that again. Colossians 3.20 Obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. <clears throat> um, and then, Ephesians 6.1. Children, 
Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on the earth. <clears throat> Guys, honoring your parents, loving your parents, doing what your parents say is not an option for you to decide based on what you think that they should or shouldn't do. Whether you like it or not. Whether you feel like doing the dishes or not. Whether you think that they should have a better tone with you so you can smart off of them. It's not an option. You don't get to make that call. The Bible says you honor them. You are to do what they ask you to do and to honor them and to, to become the person they're trying to train you to be because God said so. Not because you like it. Not because you understand it. Not because you agree with it. Because God said so. Of course, it, obviously we're not talking about a parent who would have you do something illegal or to hurt you or anything like that. But if your parent says, get up and do the dishes, the, get up and do the dishes. There should be no arguing and back talking. No <sighs> ugly rudeness. Um, along with that, there should never be talking rude or ugly to your parents. Um, they, they deserve better than that. They deserve respect. They are your parents. And, and I don't want to hear a 628 girl doing that. Anyways, you know, use your manners. Tell them thank you. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Ask them. May I please? Can you do this? <clears throat> Not demanding. Not because you think that they deserve it or you think that you should or anything else, but because God tells you to. It is a sin not to. So, remember that the next time your parents are telling you something or not telling you something. Um, we had a big discussion yesterday. My house about social media. Because I'm the meanest mom in the world, y'all know, and won't give my kids social media. All three kids try to give me reasonings as to why they they need it or deserve it or want it or and, and we had to talk about it's not your decision you don't have to like it but you have to abide by it you know and and that's my decision for my kids your parents may let you have it your parents may not let you do something else it's their decision they are the ones praying they're the ones God's given the wisdom to train you and to raise you up it's their decision to make you don't get to argue that okay honor your parents the Bible also gives us some little information about what God says to do if you don't. <clears throat> Just to show you how serious God is about you honoring your parents. Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21. If someone has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother and will not listen to them when they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders of the gate. They shall say to the elders, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all of the men of the town are to stone him to death. Thankfully, we're not in under the law. We're under grace. Because I think all of us would probably fall in that sometime. We're stubborn and rebellious. The Bible says it's wrong. And in this moment, God said, Stone him. Take your son home, son, because you can't have the evil. That's how serious God takes honoring your parents. And then Exodus 21, 17 says, Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. So, that next time you want to back talk your parents or be ugly or think that they're crazy, just remember God takes it serious. And part of love is honoring them showing them that you you may not agree with it but you're going to do that because of who they are the respect that they deserve so this week love love and kindness I want to challenge you you have been given an opportunity that we pro I never thought my kids would have to just have a lot of time at home doing nothing being with your family take advantage of it Use that to get to know your siblings better. If you don't have siblings, call me. I'll put you on the phone with my kids and get to know them. Spend time with your parents. I don't care if you think that it's not fun or they're corny or they're not cool or that they're so embarrassing. Spend time with them. You'll enjoy it. Do something with them. Ask them questions. Get to know them. 
I want y'all to let me know the things that you do.